Ionic compounds are made of a positive metal ion and a negative non-metal ion. And electrolysis allows us to split the metal from the non-metal using electricity. In part one, we looked at the electrolysis of molten aluminium oxide. Molten ionic compounds are simpler because there are only two ions, a positive metal ion shown in red and a negative non-metal ion shown in blue. But when the ionic compound is dissolved in water, when it's aqueous, we also have to consider that the water itself splits into a positive hydrogen ion and a negative hydroxide ion, in addition to the metal and non-metal ion from the ionic compound, hydrogen being one of the only positive non-metal ions. This video looks at the electrolysis of brine or salt water. Table salt, the salt we put in our food, is sodium chloride, the sodium being the positive metal ion with a charge of plus one, and the chlorine being our non-metal ion with a charge of minus one. When sodium chloride dissolves in water, it splits or dissociates into a positive sodium ion and a negative chloride ion, in addition to our hydrogen and hydroxide ions from the water. This is our electrolyte, the substance that we're splitting. Then the positive sodium and hydrogen ions are attracted to the negative cathode, and the negative chloride and hydroxide ions are attracted to the positive anode. So firstly, let's see what happens at the cathode. We have our positive sodium and hydrogen ions, but only one can be electrolyzed. At the cathode, it's always the least reactive ion that is electrolyzed, because it requires less energy. If we look at the reactivity series, hydrogen is less reactive than sodium, so it gets electrolyzed. As shown by an ionic half equation, two hydrogen ions gain one electron each from the cathode to form two hydrogen atoms, and because hydrogen likes to be in pairs, it forms a diatomic hydrogen molecule. The gain of electrons is called reduction. We'll see what happens to the leftover sodium ions later. So now, what happens at the anode? Well, we have our negative chloride and hydroxide ions, and again, only one of them can be electrolyzed. At the anode, the rule is that if a halide or group 7 ion is present, then it gets electrolyzed, and if there isn't a halide ion present, then the hydroxide gets electrolyzed. Now, chlorine is a halide ion, therefore, it gets electrolyzed. As shown in the ionic half equation, two chloride ions each lose an electron to the anode to form two chlorine atoms. Now, chlorine also likes to be in pairs, so it also forms a diatomic chlorine molecule. The loss of electrons is called oxidation. So, we have hydrogen gas bubbles at the cathode, chlorine gas bubbles at the anode, and the remaining sodium and hydroxide ions bond to make sodium hydroxide solution. All three electrolysis products are useful. Hydrogen can be used as a fuel for rockets and cars, chlorine can be used to disinfect swimming pools, and sodium hydroxide is also used in cleaning products. Thank you for watching. Please enjoy my other science, engineering, and maths videos.